Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Hit the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 62. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Take two. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, what it do, man? It's your big homie Bobby Dollars from the Bobby Dollars Show and BobbyDollarsShow.com. Shouts out to Bobby Dollars. I don't know where you're coming in from. International Hype is not just a hashtag, it's a way of life. Yeah, real talk, man. Hey, uh, I guess I'm coming in from the city of St. Louis, man. Uh, <laughs> everybody know that city ain't the city to be talking too much about because uh, it's a little weird here. So uh, I'm from there and I'm from a few other places too, man. All over the universe. I'm talking where they got pineapple cushion. and, uh, you know, never mind. We're, we're, never mind. It's cool. <laughs> we, we, are go- we are going there today yeah. with the topic. Let's hit the run down first. The custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is my clothing line where you can get your custom you know what I'm saying? Your jersey, well, custom baseball jerseys, sweatsuits, jackets, t-shirts, all of that love is for you over there at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and Twitter. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. That's at H2H Cleaning. That's Instagram only. It's a tri-state area situation. Unless unless you make it worth my while, then I will slide out to St. Louis and cut your lawn. <laughs> I, I heard if that. Bobby t- Bobby tell me he can't handle it, you know what I'm saying? I'll come out, we handle it together. Uh, <laughs> now let's hit the rundown. Uh, Damn, I'm slow. I'm slowing it up today. Yeah. Q, where you at? Mondays, every Monday, E Block Radio Network. Shout out to my man Q Lewis. Every Monday, E Block Radio Network, 2 p.m. Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network, every Tuesday. Wednesday is 216 The Blend, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursday, uh, I say, no. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com. My bad, T. Uh, I say Podcast Radio Network. Shout out to my man, Is. Get well soon, bro. Uh, I say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m every friday and then we go saturday to thc media thc media every saturday at 10 a.m sunday we are still looking to fill in that slot y'all now episode 62 my man bobby dollars is in the building what it this week's topic this week's topic is should your kids get to know the real you when we're talking about this topic it is all aspects of that should your kids know that you smoke that you drink that you cuss like a seller uh that you, you know what i'm saying that you steal, that you scheme, whatever it is that you're doing, should your kids know all that involves you to be you? Let the guests go first here on the Hot House Podcast. Well, yeah, man, you know. Um, Shout out to my, my daughter screaming in the background. My bad, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, man, from my perspective, to be absolutely honest with you, I'm going to say, yeah, man, hell yeah. Um, don't never hide nothing from your kids, man. Don't ever sugarcoat anything. But at the same time, when you allow these children to be a part of your situation as an adult, you have to get them a good understanding on why, not a reason, but an understanding. I mean, you can create any kind of reason for any kind of false pretense, but when you get them a good understanding, then they can come up with their own reasons why things are the way that they are. So I would say absolutely, man, 100%. I don't hide nothing from my kids. They know everything and anything about me. That that you just said right there is how this topic got sparked. Somebody said to me, I never hid nothing from my kids. They always knew what was going on. Right. And that was right there. I disagreed completely with what they were saying because of the because of what was going on at that particular time. That I ain't we ain't gonna touch on that. That was a personal situation. Um right. but this is why I would say that you can't have them know it all, is because of those situations where it's like when you got your, the fellas is over and we watching the game and we doing what we doing. I don't want my son sitting here while we doing this. I don't want him to see that side of me because it's not something that's appropriate. If you do this though, where it's always daddy always smokes or daddy always drinks or daddy always does this, that, or whatever that he does or, or mommy does if, uh, to use the young ladies looking at her mom's perspective, they gonna always want to aspire to be doing what you're doing. And I don't want you to come up doing this. I don't want you to sit here and glorify it to the fact where like, well, my dad, my uncles always did that. So then when I get my crib, that's what me and my friends is going to do. Same aspect with the girl is if mommy is doing something that ain't really age appropriate or kid appropriate, don't put it in front of their face. Don't put it in front of them for them to glorify it. 
they only gonna glorify we're not necessarily before I was even gonna say it. They're not gonna only glorify what you put in front of them because you got the people who want the exact opposite of whatever it is that you give them. You give them a stable home, they love going to the house, cousin's house that got chaos. Right. So let's not, you know, let's not <clears throat> let's not blanket the statement. But I just feel like there's certain aspects of you that you shouldn't keep away from your kids until they reach a certain age. And even in that stage, like my mom is in her 70s. Me and my mom ain't never gonna have a drink together. Yeah. Like now my mom don't drink, but still the same thing. Like me and my dad would never have had a drink together. It's just not something that I think is like these two things shouldn't go don't go together to me. Right. There's a certain line there that we shouldn't cross. I mean, I get what you're saying, man, but the fact is, I it's like um no matter what you do in this life, you can't sugarcoat or hide anything from your children simply because children are sponges, man. Like we've spoke before about this and I've said, your kid is gonna consume any and everything that they think is gonna help them or be a benefit to them at the time that they consuming it. It could be useless information. A lot of shit that you know you and I really didn't, <clears throat> wouldn't care too much about, wouldn't think twice about, probably wouldn't even look at on TV or none of that. But at that present moment for that child, it means the world because it's a learning, it's a learning point. It's like in a video game, it's a checkpoint. So here we are right now. You don't have to put this in front of your kid's face. You don't have to present it to your child like you would if it was some kind of class or like it was a, a teaching moment. You just don't run away from the situation because you got to understand to yourself, why are you doing it if it's so bad for them? Why it make you so happy, but it's not good for them? Like they gonna ask you those questions. Well, dad, why are you always telling me I can't smoke weed, but every time I come in the house, it smell like weed. Oh, I'm grown. That's an excuse. That's a reason. That's bullshit. You see I'll what be, I'm, I'm saying? With you. <clears throat> so if you're telling your child, well, it always smell like weed when you come in the house because dad got arthritis and this is what make me feel better. This is what keeps dad from being in pain and angry and, and why me and you can get up and go do this and that and the other and blah, blah, blah. Now he has an understanding of why you smoke and he can come up with his own reason. He don't need to hear no extra curricular, you know, I'm doing this because of that and this, that and the other. None of that. You know what I'm saying? You keeping it 100 with him. You see I, what I'm now, saying? Now, if you take if you're taking it from that aspect, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Now, that's if you're having a conversation with your kids. Most people, it's it kind of it's tricky, it's tricky in the ages because most people I need to explain myself to my kid for why this, that, or whatever is going on. But that's why I said in that same aspect of we watching the game, we chilling, we relaxing, but this is not the same as me and my son are sitting here, me and my daughter are sitting here to watch the game. Yeah. Like you can't come down here to watch it with <clears> us because we got too much going on that I don't want you involved in. Just like right. I remember my man was saying he became vegan. He like, he wasn't going to eat no more meat enough. It was like, okay, you know, that's the decision you're making. That's cool. My uncle's been vegetarian since the seventies. I completely understand. Um, so why are you letting your kids eat meat though? If you feel like it was bad for you and it was a thing that was, you read up on it and you felt how you felt about it. Okay. Why was you not putting that on your kids? Then? Yeah. Cause it's like, if you felt that strongly about it for yourself, wouldn't you feel like that strongly about it for them? Yeah. But, and I mean, I feel that a hundred percent though, about the acknowledgement of who you are as an individual man to your kids, you know what I'm saying? Like your chemical makeup is everything that they're going to see regardless to whether you want them to or not. You know, it's a hundred things out here, man, that your kid is going to see that you're not going to allow them to see or, or show them yourself from no instance. Hell, they're going to see sex on TV. They're going to hear your, your baby mama or girlfriend use the word bitch 200 times in a week, and she ain't even thought about it. She ain't tripped off of it. They're going to hear you say the word nigga to your homeboys, this, that, and the other, and you ain't tripping off of that because it's mindless. It's nothing. But the kid is consuming that. That's a part of his culture. That's his life. That's what he's doing. And you can't run from that hype. You can't you can't put yourself on a pedestal to a point to where you so out of reach with your child that your child feels like, why in the hell am I this low, but my dad and my mom get the opportunity to do whatever. And the only excuse they give is because I'm grown. Actually, yeah. you know. See, now for, me, now, see, for me, it's like, that's one of those things where you have to always watch the things that you say and do in front of them because yeah. it ain't you, you don't want the phone call from school that says, hey, Mr. Bobby, your son just called me a B and he's in kindergarten. Right. But right. if this is what we do in front of him all the time, 
this is what gets normalized to. Yeah. If and, daddy, and if is. daddy come home and have a drink mm-hmm. every night, you know what I'm saying? And daddy blacks out on the couch every night. Then when I grow up, I think that that's what's supposed to go on. That's the same aspect for the person who, who hits the, like the, the young guy or girl who grows up and then they mom and dad was in an abusive relationship. That's right. what they grow up thinking in their relationship and with love and how it all looks. Cause that's yeah. what they saw. And it is, it's the aesthetic of it all. But the whole fact is, is that they not gravitating to the stuff that you do. They not, they not looking at you and saying, well, daddy black out on the couch every day. It look fun. I'm gonna do that when I get his age. It's nothing like that. It's second nature. What it is, it's a submission within the brain and the mindset. It's a submission within the mind, man. That submission is something that is brought up on you from day one from two years old and all the way on out. That's why doctors make so much money off of us because they can literally sit back in our face and tell us, well, you got high blood pressure, you got high cholesterol, you got this, it's hereditary because your mama had it and your daddy had it, it's passed through you and your kid will probably have it. That's bullshit. That's not what that is. What it is, is just, it's that submission in our self-conscious and our mind because we're doing the exact same thing that our parents do because we feel like it's safe. It's a security blanket. If my mama eat pig feet, I done watched her eat pig feet for 10 years and ain't nothing happened to my mama. I'm finna try these damn pig feet. Mm-hmm. And I want some, I want some of them pig feet. Look what look at mama. She happy, she enjoying them. I'm finna eat them. And then when your mama gets 65 and she got high blood pressure through the ass and them pills done cause kidney failure, you sitting in the doctor's office saying it was hereditary, man. And now I got I'm gonna get kidney failure. No, it wasn't. She was eating the same shit she was. Yeah, I was doing and, the same thing. You see what I'm that's saying? That's exact, and that's exactly my whole point with the situation is at some point we that cycle has to be broken. Just yeah. like if you know it's not hereditary if we don't all go doing the same stuff. Exactly. If this person go, if this person, if this, like you said with the mom that does that, if her daughter then goes plant-based, she's not going to get high blood pressure. Exactly. <laughs> like, she you know changed the whole game. You she hear changed me? the whole game. Yeah. But that's why it's the same thing with any behavior. Any behavioral aspect of the person is like, if you all, if your mom always cussed you out, when you was a kid, you're going to grow up cussing your kids out because this is what it is, you know what I'm saying? Or you're going to be the type of person who says, I remember when I was 11 and didn't like being called a little B. Yeah, and I'm not going to yeah. do that to my daughter. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I remember my dad always calling me a nut and smacking me in the back of my head, so I ain't going to do that to my son. Like, it's those things that you say either, like, I'm going to break the cycle because his dad did it and his dad did it. And you know, right. It's always right. one of those things where it's like, that's why I say it's just, it's not so much of a hide yourself and try to uh, portray a sense of, uh, had a perception that you're perfect, but you're supposed to say to yourself, I want my child to do better than I'm doing in all aspects. Yeah. I don't understand how people don't want their children to do better than them. Cause some people would be like in competition with their kids where it's like, we just was talking off mic about the lawn care service, which we won't get into later, where yeah. you got 10 yeah. years experience in the lawn care business, I got one. Yeah. So. Why would I not want to give you? Why would I not ask you for all that information? But some people will look at it and be like, "Man, I ain't telling him because I don't want him to get." Yeah. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> and people, the sad thing is, people look at their kids like that. Yeah, like and it's, yeah, it's it's man, you know what? I I throw this shameless plug out here, man. Look, season ain't four, nothing shameless about it. Go ahead and plug it. Look, season four <laughs> of, the Bob, of the Bobby Dollar Show is coming like in the next week. I'm editing all the rest of them now. My very first episode is about this divide we got with black men and women and how it's affecting us and affecting our families and everything. And um, I really oh, do believe- when, when will we be dropping that? You know what I'm saying? Let's, that, ain't that shame it, us about these plugs, brother. It's, it's coming, it's <laughs> coming, man. Like it's it'll be here by the end of this week because today is Sunday. It'll be here by the end of this week. And then, like Happy I said, like, like I said to you before, the reason why it's not out already is because this is going to be my bench season and we reacting throughout this season. So I'm downloading videos and we, me and my co-hosts, we react into those videos, audio, not video. Our reactions oh, co- are, are audio. Throw your co-host name out there. Oh, oh, my homie, big homie Mo, man. Yeah. He, uh, his, uh, I don't know. I can't, I think I can't remember his Twitter. I think it's family spelled P H A. Uh, like family P H A though instead of F A, and um, he on Twitter man. He he wanted the big homies, but at the same time, like I say, he the co-host man. Just listen to the show; you'll get to know him, and you'll get the you know hear everything you need to. I don't want to take all day talking about that man. I just wanted I just wanted to mention it because I wanted people to understand that the mindset is there, man. And some of the things that we are allowing our children to see, we shouldn't. 
and some of the things that we should be letting our children see, we don't have enough patience or common sense to allow it. And I think that's where we go wrong with the whole adulting and parenting thing. Within this whole realm of adulting, too many adults, too many kids that are adults, too many young adults feel like it's hard to do the things that you have to do on a regular basis to survive, but it's okay to waste time and waste money. You know what I'm saying? To be a part of a clique or to be popular on social media and all that, but your lights cut out, you on the mattress on the floor. You know what I'm saying? You, you've you been riding in the same dented up ass car for the last three years because you won't get insurance. You know, it's, it's a lot, man, that comes with what we doing that we should be showing our kids and showing our families that we just not. One of you them know. things that you just kind of brought up there, when people always tell the child, because I'm grown, without yeah. a, being able to explain it, like, I don't explain myself to my kids. And yeah. because I have a one and a nine-year-old, if your kids is a little older, it's not it's not explaining yourself to your kids, it's, le- it's giving them a better understanding. Right. Which once they get to a certain age, you need to give them a better understanding because they're going to be in a situation where they got to make decisions. And exactly what you just touched on was... Some of us are not equipped to make those decisions. Some of us shouldn't have three kids because <laughs> mentally, oh <boy>. mentally <laughs> because mentally you're not there. We are all not equipped to be in a position of decision making, whether yeah. you be mom or dad. Just because you got three kids don't always mean that you know what you're talking about or know how to explain it or know how to break it down. Right, the same way right. that you said that, same way that you said, like, this is why daddy smokes is because daddy has, has chronic back pain. Daddy has insomnia. He can't sleep. And he, had, like, if you can give it to him with those type of explanations, that makes it different than now uh, daddy just likes to get high. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, but, then, but then, too, though, don't get it twisted, though, hype man, because if that's your truth, Tell them that like, but the fact is about the whole kids is you don't have to give kids information until they ask you. You're if you're if you're presenting yourself and you volunteering information to your children and trying to make your kids see some things that they're not interested in before they need to be, then all you're doing is clogging their mind with a bunch of bullshit and they're going to miss, they're going to misinterpret it. And then when they get out in public and go into school situations and shit, they're just going to be spewing stuff out and your ass going to have the feds at your crib. Like, wait a minute. I don't grow no weed. Wait, what y'all talking about? <laughs> you got some people though who be telling their kids, daddy's so- the plug. Why are you t- Telling a six-year-old you're the plug. I don't know, man. It's that <laughs> clout, it's that clout shit, bro. It's that clout shit, man. Black but people you have for clout. You looking for clout for the elementary school student? <laughs> nah, man. He looking for clout. <laughs> He looking for the parental clout, man, where them kids, some some parents know how their kids are, man. You know what your kids going to do before they leave that damn house. You ain't crazy because they do it right in front of you. They kids. You know what I'm saying? It's just like your dog. Your dog do something bad and then do it again in front of somebody and you would tell him, man, my bad, man. I don't know why he keep doing that shit. I told is that, you know what I'm saying? Like you knew that shit before you left the crib. You knew it, but you took the dog over there anyway. So two things, <laughs> two things you just said. <laughs> One, like we just talking about, everybody's not an equipped parent. Everybody don't, <laughs> everybody don't know what their kids is really like. I some got you, them, man. Okay, I I give you that. Some of them is just, in and out, just like you don't know. She don't like. She don't like. Uh, yeah. She don't like yeah. pink. Why you keep I buying her all this pink stuff when she's like yellow? You know what I, see, what I, mean? like, I, I see what you're saying. It is some very, very less attentive parents. I got you, man. I definitely understand what you're saying. That's funny as hell to me. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just one of them things, bro. That's all. It's just one of them things. And with me, like I say, I don't sugarcoat shit. I've always taught my kids. My kids have always known me. They've always known everything about me um, from my from my street days, coming home with guns and money and all kinds of shit to the days of me coming home with book bags full of books and getting educated and doing better like my kids done seen it all, man. And I think that's what done made my kids so stable and what done gave them such a strong foundation to stand on because they know they seen the change. They seen the evolution. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't hide any of that. I wanted them to see that dad can be better, that dad can be everything that they needed. You know what I'm saying? From every aspect. So my kids will tell you, man, my dad book smart. He got degrees, but shit, you ain't gonna get over on him neither. He got plenty of common sense. He he was raised in the street. Don't don't second guess that. And that's weird hearing your children say that about you, but they understand. You know See, what I'm saying? Uh, this is another thing too. 
Uh, also, these are different the different stages and ages of your kids. If your kids is in their 20s, 30s, or, you know, like, obviously, then your relationship and conversations are different. They got yeah. life experiences. They have life experiences of their own outside of their parents that they can tap into. They got their own situations where they see, oh, like you said, a back pain or a medical situation where this is what helps. Yeah. Uh, versus the fifth, the 15, the 11 year old who's going like, they just like to get high. <laughs> they just like well, to drink. That's and true. I... Also too, when you say too, like with, with older kids and when they become older, young adults or adults, like you got enough time in with them that they can see those different stages of you. Yeah. Where, again, you don't need to glorify like, yeah, daddy just came in with the whole. Yeah, Why are you doing that with your kids? <laughs> yeah, but people do it. People right. do it. Where like, yeah, you gonna grow up and you gonna take over. Like, huh? <laughs> that's what some. Yeah. That's what some people do. That ain't me, man. But I will say, um, at the age your children are now, you said one and nine, right? Yeah. Man, this is the perfect time and the perfect age for you to have conversations with your kids. This, especially that one year old, he ain't got a lot to say, bro. He ain't, he ain't, she he ain't, ain't got two be, girls. Oh, I'm sorry. She ain't gonna be able to respond and give you the conversation you're looking for. But the key thing about all of that is what I always tell every individual that I speak to when you listening, you learning. So when you talking to her, even at one, She's listening and you better believe she's learning and she's understanding you. She's understanding your octaves, your tones. She's learning when you're going to be mad, when you're going to be happy. Hell, in my case, she knew when I was high. She knew when I wasn't. Because <laughs> when I was high, I was tossing her ass up to the ceiling. When I wasn't, I was rocking her in my arms. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when she seen my face when I was high, she knew because she would bust out laughing somehow, some way. My son and my daughter was like that, but I'm telling you, bro, like, talk to that Receptive. nine year old. Talk to that nine year old. Talk to her. Yeah, see, this is the one, Tell this me. is one of those things. Uh, we talked about this. I think uh, I think we might have talked about this last week, but smooth. I know we talked about it on GFT. Shouts out to GFT every Monday night, too. We do the live, uh, we do the live join the uh, conversations on Monday nights. So we're at GFT radio, uh, on the YouTube, the Twitch, the Facebook, you know, tap in with the situation every Monday at yeah. 10. Um, where we talked about like um, you can revert back in your mind to your grandma, your aunt or uncle or somebody who passed when you was like six, but yeah. you can vividly remember that feeling that you had from that individual 30 years later, 40 years later, 50 years yeah. later. And the one thing that we all always do is, ah, they two, they don't know. They three, they don't know. Right, They're this, they right. that, they don't know. Right. When if you can remember it 40 years later, yeah. <laughs> why do you, you think they saying? can't remember it in the moment or two years ago or whatever you yeah. still vividly have it and you can still smell the pie you know like when you walk Real in the talk. house or if you just think about it so why do Real you think talk. they don't know nothing Yeah. so I've never been the goo goo gaga type of guy like you saying like with the one year old or the nine year old when they were babies and you like telling them stuff yeah I'm having to talk to them because yeah. they're gonna only follow what you give them and yeah. like you're saying, if you cussing this, that, and whatever in front of them, and they one or six months or seven months, guess what their first words going to be? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And you don't want to be the one that's getting the phone call from the daycare and says, your daughter <laughs> keeps calling them a little bee. <laughs> hey, real All talk, right? though. Real talk, though. Yeah. Hey, that's your son up. keeps doing this. Like, you know, but if that's what you do <laughs> in front of them, because they don't know, they only such and such. You know what I'm saying? Can't, can't believe that, man. You can't believe that, bro. Them kids. Or know. you think, or you be like, why are you always humping your mom leg? Because you thought she was asleep all them nights. So you thought yeah. he was asleep all them nights. Right. And it wasn't. And they knew, yeah. they knew ex exactly what was going on, man. But I tell you, bro, I'm just I'm just out here right now, man, trying to survive and make life easy for them. Um at this point, like you said, it's levels, man. It's, it's real levels to all of what you're showing your family and showing your kids. I have to uh, also revert back to what I was just talking about in the episode I was just saying to you about um, the black and the divide between black and uh, men and women. Um, I have to revert back to the whole phrase of alpha male. Like um, right now, 
a lot of women don't want men using the term alpha male. Um, a lot of people don't really know what an alpha male is. And an alpha male, you know, they have to understand it's not because you got the most money or because you got the biggest penis or because you got the most hoes or because you got a big ass house and a car. And that's not being an alpha male. That's just a cat with a big penis and a nice ass car. Like that shit don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. to be an alpha male is to be that man that's in that household teaching and providing when you walk into your home and see your kids at the table doing homework and you just sit everything down and go sit at the table with them. What y'all doing? What kind of homework you got? And you trying to help them get better and progress. They came first, you know, chivalry. When your presence, when your presence is there and you're not. Yeah, that can, that you, yeah. that's, that's, that's very key, man. You know, and then even with the woman, man, like, she she's lingering and feeding and 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 honing in on information and wanting you to give her to when your woman can sit back and watch you interact with those kids that y'all created when she can see you help the development of those kids and see that it's boundless that that it's it's a glass ceiling on what you're doing for that family throughout them kids she want to learn too she want to get involved. She wants you to help her. She wants you to show her. She wants you to be that alpha male. You know what Bro. I'm saying? So it's just funny as hell that you said that. My wife uh, always told me like one of her favorite qualities about me was that like you really wanted to be there with the kids. Like you yeah. really be hands on and like you want to interact with them and all of that. It's like a lot of dudes don't be like that. A lot of dudes do. And wait, let's, before I even go any further, a lot of dudes do. And let's give them their flowers. Forget the ones that ain't. We ain't even talk about them. Let's yeah. talk about the ones that do because we don't get enough credit out there for the dudes that do. There's a lot of dudes out here that's taking care of their kids, that's handling their responsibilities. So let's big them up before we, let's not even demean the other ones. Let's not even talk about them. But right. She always said that though, like that was always one of like my favorite qualities about you is like that you really wanted to be. Obviously, we had already been talking for years before she got pregnant, but yeah. that you really was like family is important, the kids is important. My whole situation with them is like the influence. If you're not there because you out doing whatever, you could be just nine to five, nine to five in it, and you ain't even doing nothing, you know, nefarious. But if you're not there, you're not the influence. Somebody's yeah. going to be the influence, or something's <clears throat> going to be the influence. Hey, that's my whole the thing is it is it has to be us. It has to be yeah. me and her. They got to yeah. we got to be the influence. Now, obviously, we ain't perfect and nobody is. There's gonna always be aspects of our game that we need to work on. You know, yeah. you could always yeah. be a better father. You could always be a better son, a better friend, yeah. or a better everything. So we still got to be evaluating our game and still trying to get better at it. Because like I just said with you, when we talked about the ten years versus one year experience, yeah. if you got yeah, more yeah. experience, even. You've been a father longer than me, so why would I not listen to something that you're telling me? When you yeah. have more experience, you don't just again because somebody telling you something, plug your ears and say like, "I know it, I know it, I know it all." Yeah. That's what There's Andrew Bynum did. Like to, this. That's what Andrew Bynum did to Kareem when he tried to show him a couple of moves. He told him he knew enough. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what well, you see, but you see what that evolved to, man. Like you got to be humble, man. You can't, like even myself, bro. I ain't gonna stunt, bro. I know a lot. I do. Like I won't. I will not shy away from the fact that I'm very intellectual. I know a lot, but the the biggest quality about my intellect is that it's ever, it's, it's ever, ever evolving, ever evolving, ever, ever, ever developing. Like I never stop learning. So whatever it is that somebody's teaching me, if it's something that's not already in my head, if it's something that I don't already have coronal knowledge on, I'm gonna make sure it sticks. So I'm not one of those kind of guys that just get out here and run my mouth and just be talking be, and just saying shit to seem relevant because then you lying and you making up shit, you making up stories and all of that. And when people bring that back to you later on, or when people want to talk to you because you seem so interesting, you saying the same shit over and over again. And then it's just not authentic, man. And, and that's what you want to show your kids. You want them to see that you are authentic, man. They, you want them to see that, that you are a real person. That's when they're going to want to be like you. That's when they're going to want to do what you do and dress like you and, and drive the same car you drive. And everywhere you go, they start crying because you leave in the house when they can feel how authentic you are because of the way that you treat them and the things that you're showing them about yourself. Man, they can be two and a half, three years old and they'll feel it. 
Real talk, they'll straight feel it. It's one thing that you just touched on is that you always, it don't matter, you could be 85, you still should be learning. Yeah. You should never get to a point where you say like, I know enough because yeah. things are always changing around you. Man, uh, every day. Your, your wife is changing, your husband is changing, your kids are changing, the world is yeah. changing. So Real you talk. should never be in a place where you go, I know enough, I'm good, I don't need to learn anything yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's switch it up now, talk a little bit about you, Bobby Dollars. Now <clears throat> we didn't touch on slightly, the uh, new season is coming out. Uh, yeah. let's talk to us yeah. a little bit about the podcast. Um, the podcast, man, that's uh, the Bobby Dollar Show on bobbydollarshow.com. Back up, back up, just to jack up one inch and let them see the shirt now. We got Mondays on the E-Block. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I'm in my basement, man, and I ain't got my walls and shit put up yet, man. I've been doing this little business, this other business, so my money kind of tied up, but it's chilly in this motherfucker. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm bad. I ain't mean to cuss like that. It's chilly. In it. <laughs> so I had to, I had to put my hoodie on. But um, <clears throat> Bobby BFT Dollar Show, man. for grown folks talk. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you can let them fly. We're good. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. That's what it is then. But the show, <laughs> this season four, man. Uh-oh. Bobby is frozen on us. Season four is going to be interesting. It's going to You sure? Because I'm I'm still moving. Yeah, yeah. I ain't... I, and you did. I'm, I, was like, I ain't never stopped moving. My man, shouts out to GFT. My man Willie will fix that. And they'll never know. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, season four, man. This is gonna be something new for me. I got a co-host this year. It's my uh, homeboy Mo, man. Um, he he go by Big Homie Mo. Um, he's also part of the Big Homies podcast that we are uh, doing some things different with this year, and um. This season, man, we're going to do a binge season. And this season is also going to be a reaction season. We're going to, we've been downloading movies. I mean, not movies, downloading clips from YouTube and stuff that we find that are interesting. And we've been playing them back. And as they play, we've been doing an audio voiceover on them and giving our opinion and stating how we feel about what we're watching. So it's kind of like a regular reaction video, but only it's just the audio version. I'm kind of getting away from all this visual stuff. It's just too time consuming. So um, beyond that, you'll get that in five episode increments. And every five, you can listen to them all at one time, or you can listen to them back to back or however you want to do it. And then the next maybe week later, we're going to drop five more. I just need that week to edit and get them done. And um, they come in this month. So I'm going to try to do a 15 or 20 episode season. And like I said, drop them in bunches of five so you can binge them and just check them out how you want. Something different for me, something I ain't never done before. I don't know if other podcasters have. Um, so we're doing have. a net, the Netflix version of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, basically, you know what I'm saying? Because it just, I just kind of, I don't have a time, man, with, with all the businesses and things that I run and everything that I do. I don't really have the time to sit down and edit show for show. I mean, episode for episode. I, I'm trying to just knock them all out at one time. And then however me is done, I'm dropping them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See, this is why me and you, Bobby, I just told you this before we started. <laughs> me and you, after the first conversation, we're here. Got a lot of hype you heard in me. You know what I'm saying? Because right. now, Real let's throw talk. this to my man. My man, Bobby, got more than one situation going on, just like me. Now let's talk, you saying, throw out the lawn care services for you. Oh, all yeah, this, yeah. All the folks out there in the Missouri region, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let them know about this lawn care service. And we're yeah, growing we're... something that helps the other business. Throw, throw it all out there now. Ain't nothing <laughs> shameless about these plugs. You know all right, man. Okay, so let me run this down real quick. So I am the owner of uh, Yard Envy Lawn Care Landscaping and Gardening, LLC. Um I've been doing this for somewhere between eight and 10 years. I really have to go look at my actual business license and paperwork, you know, to in my creator uh, plaque or whatever to give you a date on all of that. But I've been around for damn near 10 years, man, cutting grass here in the St. Louis Metro, St. Louis area, all the way out towards Wentzville. So if you do need it, look us up. We have search engine option on Google. LC. Um, Within that gardening portion of it, um, I created Big Homies Garden, which is basically in my backyard right now because we just moved and we've been here almost a year, um, but I'm still plotting a piece of land. And um, that's where I grow all of my products, all of my pickles, cucumbers, okra, 
tomatoes, uh, grapes, um, strawberries. I grow all of that stuff myself. And um, we use all of those products to pickle and create snacks for SSJ snacks. And you can check all those all those snacks out on ssjmarket.com. Um, right now, we just dropped some new products. Uh, they coming on the website this week, and uh, it'll be uh, some new loaf, but uh, lemon loaf breads, some new roasted um, banana nut bread, um, gooey butter cookies. Oh man, uh, lemon candy popcorn. We we dropped the pickles. I put out the garlic dill pickles this week. Next week we're gonna drop the sweet heat pickles. So it's a lot coming to the website. It's a lot going on, man. Um, I mean, got t- the farmer's market popping over there at the crib. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, we're, we're a home-based business, man. So people come through. And then we also, in the St. Louis area, we also offer local pickup, local delivery. You know, that's, that's uh, what I was about to ask you about. Okay. okay. Yeah, depending upon the distance, man, we, our di- delivery prices go anywhere between $250 to $10. It just depends on the radius of the drive, you know. What about but, your out-of-town um, situations? Oh, we got a shipping on it's shipping on the um, website. So if you order on the website, again, it's ssjmarket.com. You order on the website, get you some popcorn or some pickles or something. We ship it to you directly. Um, it's a five dollar and ninety five cent flat rate shipping fee. And um, shit, we'll get it to you, man, in three to five business days. You know what I'm saying? Copy that. Shouts out to my man Bobby Dollars. Uh, let y'all behind the curtain a little bit. We did this one and had to do it again. My yeah. man was all work when I called him and let him know, though. Uh, but like I always tell people, if I don't like it, I ain't going to put it out. Yeah. And I appreciate you for coming on episode 62, though. That was uh, episode 62 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Feel it, feel it.